Okay, so sometimes you're going to be asked to figure out our x value. Um, so in this case, we are looking at ages, so we'll be asked to figure out maybe ages, or in another case, mm, test scores, or, or whatever the x value is. So sometimes we'll be asked to figure out our x value given the probability. So in this case, we were given the probability, and we have to work backwards. We looked at that if we have nice, neat numbers, what to do, but we didn't talk about what to do to figure out x values if we don't have nice, neat numbers. So let's look at this question together. A quarter of the people who have taken a certain survey are below a certain age, and the mean is 35 here, and the standard deviation is 6. So we did what we would always do, starting, starting off by labeling or diagram 35 in the middle, and we counted up by 6, and then we counted back by 6. So we got all these numbers on our x-axis. We were good to go. And we wanted to see um, what x value we could have here that a quarter of the people were below. So a quarter of the people had to be a, below a certain age here. So normally, like looking back, we would have taken our values here, or 0 0.1, or 2.14, or 13.56, or probabilities, which are our area under the curves, the areas under the curve, sorry. And we would have just added them up to see when we would get to a quarter, which actually, let's make sure we know that a quarter is 25% or 0.25. All right, so when we add up 0.1 to 2.14, we get 2.24. And then we add up the 13.56 to what we already have, and that sums up to 15 point something. So we're trying to get to 25%, and well, the next number up is 34.14. So our 25% is somewhere in this range. It's not, it's not on that line. It's not 29, it's not 35, it's somewhere in between. We have no idea what it is yet. So in order to figure out exactly what will take us up to 25%, we'll have to use our calculator to help us. And so we're going backwards now. We are given probability and we're asked to find x. So we're going the inverse direction. So in order to do this, we have to do what we call inverse norm. Inverse normal. I-N-V norm in the calculator. I-N-V and O-R-M. Okay. So we get to it in the same way we got to the normal CDF by going to second distribution, which is the VARS button. And we're looking at the third one this time, inv norm. So again, if you have the new calculator, it will look like this, um, which is a little bit easier. If you don't, you'll have to remember the order in which to enter the values. So the first thing that has to be entered is the area under the curve as a decimal. Area under the curve meaning the probability. What's the probability that in this case you're lower than a certain number? It's a quarter or 25% or 0.25. Please enter this number as a decimal or a fraction but not as a percent. So in this case, our area under the curve, so what we have shaded here, is a quarter of the curve, or 0.25. The next value that we'll enter is our mean, and in this question, our mean is 35. And finally, our last value that will be entered is our standard deviation, which in this case is 6. So the numbers entered here are the area, which is 0.25, the mean, again, which is 35, and the standard deviation, which is 6. Then we go down to paste. If you have the whole old calculator, just hold tight. We go, on, go down to paste. And if you have the old calculator, that is what you'll enter in of norm. Then you have to manually enter these values, 0 0.25, comma, 35, comma, 6 close your parentheses, and everyone would press enter at this point. And we have the age that is mentioned in this question. So a quarter of the people who have taken a certain, a certain survey 
are below that age. That's the certain age that was referred to in this question. So our answer is 30, 31. We can round up. 31 years old. Now, does that make, make sense according to our graph? Let's see, 31 years old. We expected our answer to be, be between 29 and 35 was some unknown number, and 31 totally makes sense because it is between 29 and 35, closer to 29.